Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about dynamical systems, and in this lecture I wanted to show you how easy it is to simulate chaotic dynamical systems like the Lorentz system uh, in MATLAB. Okay, so what we're going to do to start off with, I'm just going to write down, uh, remind you that we're talking about differential equations ddt of some state vector x equals some function of x. Maybe it depends on time t, uh, and maybe there's some vector of parameters in beta. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with these differential equations, x dot equals f of x, uh, comma t, comma beta. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Lorentz system. So the Lorentz system, uh, this is one of the earliest models uh, for, for chaos by Lorentz. I think this was 1963. And this is a simple three-dimensional model that gets a lot of the features of um, chaotic, turbulent, atmospheric convection. Uh, and it's really simple. It's given by three differential equations, x dot, y dot, and z dot. So x dot, y dot, z dot equals um, some parameter sigma times y minus x, some parameter uh, x times rho minus z, minus y, and then the third equation is x, y, minus beta, z. Okay, so a really simple differential equation. Um, notice that it has these three parameters, sigma, rho, and beta. And so I'm going to put those all into this big bold vector beta. So bold beta is going to be a vector of um, sigma, rho, and this little beta here. Okay, so my three parameters of Lorentz are going to go into this vector of parameters. Uh, maybe I'll make this a column vector by transposing it. And I'm going to make my, um, my state vector, so this uh, x, y, and z are going to go into a state vector bold x equals x, y, and z transpose, so it's a column vector. Okay, so I have this differential equation, uh, so basically x is a three-dimensional state vector, f is three uh, components of a vector field, and there are three parameters in beta. And this will give me some dynamics that will um, kind of oscillate around one lobe, and then it'll jump to another lobe, and then oscillate back, and kind of do this classic Lorentz dynamics. That's what a trajectory is going to do. Okay, So we're going to code this up in MATLAB, and this should be pretty simple. Okay. So to code up in MATLAB, we're going to start with uh, just a blank script called simlorentz.m. Um, and here what we're going to do is we're going to use the ODE45 command in MATLAB. That's uh, kind of an ODE integrator. And we're going to integrate our Lorentz vector field. So maybe the first thing I should do is actually make my right-hand side function, this f of x function. Uh, let's do that. So let's make a function called function dx equals uh, Lorentz, and Lorentz is going to take in an x, a t, and some parameters beta. Uh, and in MATLAB, I, it always goes t comma x, um, so I'm going to do that too, so we're going to start with time, then x, then beta. Okay, uh, and this is going to have three outputs. So dx, there's going to be the first component of dx, the second component of dx, and the third component. So we're going to say uh, dx equals this vector of output. So it's going to have one, two, three components. The first, um, I'm going to give myself a little cheat sheet here just so that I remember uh, x1 equals x, x2 equals y, x3 equals z, and beta1 equals uh, sigma, beta 2 equals rho, and beta 3 equals uh, beta. Okay, so I'm just giving myself this cheat sheet. I'm going to delete this in a little bit, but I want to remember what all my variables are called. Uh, okay, and what do we have for the first dx? We have um, x dot equals sigma, that's beta 1, times, uh, and this is capital beta, sigma times y minus x. Now y is x2 and x is x1. The, so this is the second component of my state vector is y, the first component is x, so this is sigma x, y minus x. 
I know this is a little confusing because I'm using x to be my vector of states and to be the first state, and I'm using beta to be my vector of state of uh, coefficients, and also it's the third parameter, but I think it's okay. Okay, so y dot is equal to x, that's x1, times rho minus z. Now rho is my second beta, and z is x3, minus y, which is x2. And then uh, z dot is x times y minus beta, which is beta 3, times z, which is x3. Okay, so I just want to double check that I didn't mess anything up. Uh, x dot is sigma y minus x. y dot is x rho minus z minus y, and then z dot is x times y minus beta times z. This all looks good to me. I can delete my cheat sheet here. And I have a function now that when I give it time x and beta, it returns x dot, y dot, and z dot in a vector. Okay, I'm going to save this uh, as Lorentz dot m. Good. Uh, I want it to be in the same folder as this uh, change folder. Okay. I want that to be Lorentz.m. Okay, good. So now it's in the same folder as simlorentz.m. Okay, so I have my right hand side. I have f of x. Now, if I want to simulate this, what I'm going to do uh, in ODE 45, so the first thing I want to do is I want to define um, my beta vector, what are the actual numeric values of sigma rho and beta, and also what is my initial condition, what's x naught, y naught, and z dot. So let's do that, let's say uh, beta equals, and I'm going to use the classic values that Lorentz used, so the chaotic values, 10, uh, 28, and then um, 8 thirds, so these are kind of the uh, chaotic values. I'm going to define an x naught, so x naught equals um, 0, 1, 20. This is my uh, initial condition. Good. Um, and then I want to define what a time step is, what's my delta t, and how long am I going to integrate for. So let's say uh, dt equals 0 0.001. Uh, maybe I want to integrate a time span equals uh, dt to dt to 50. So this is going to be a vector of time in increments of delta t from 0 0.001 to 50. So it's going to be a lot, about 50,000 time steps in this time span. Okay, good. So I have my, uh, my right-hand side in Lorentz. I have my beta parameters, my x naught, my time span. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Now all I have to do is define some ODE options, but I don't need to do that right now. So the great thing about ODE 45 in MATLAB, it's super easy to simulate uh, differential equations. So the output is going to be time and the time history of my state x, that's a vector of states, equals ODE 45. And ODE 45 takes in three inputs. It takes in a right-hand side function, a time span, and an initial condition. So let's give it the right-hand side function. It's going to be uh, a function of time and space, it always, ODE45 always wants a function of time and space. Even though our Lorentz vector field was not time dependent, I still tell it that it can vary this time variable even if it doesn't change the right-hand side. This is important in MATLAB. And I'm going to wrap this Lorentz vector field. And what did Lorentz take? Lorentz took um, t comma x comma beta. t comma x comma beta. So what this does in MATLAB is it essentially takes this function Lorentz, which takes in three inputs, t, x, and beta, and it locks in these values of beta, those are locked in, and it acts like it's just a function of t and x. So it says this is going to act like it's a function of t and x by locking in beta. And that's what ODE45 expects. It expects just a function of t comma x here. So if I didn't put this in, um, it wouldn't know what to do with this, this function of three, three inputs. So it locks in beta and makes it a function of two inputs. Then I give it my time span uh, and my x naught initial condition, and this will go. This will simulate right off the bat. 
One thing I like to do is give this thing some options so that it um, simulates a little bit more accurately. So you can control the error tolerances. Uh, you can say options equals ODE set. You can set the relative tolerance to be, let's say, 1E minus 12, and the absolute tolerance to be uh, 1E minus 12 time 1's 1 comma 3. And so what this does is it basically says that the relative tolerance is 10 to the minus 12, and the absolute tolerance of each of the components is 10 to the minus 12. Uh, so that's going to work nicely. And then you can give these options at the end of ODE 45. OK, so that's all we've done. We have defined a right-hand side vector field. We've put in our parameters, our initial condition, DT, and the time span. We've given some ODE options so we can dial down the tolerance so it's very, very accurate. Uh, and basically what ODE 45 is going to do is it's going to adjust its adaptive time step uh, to make delta t smaller and smaller until it meets these, um, these relative and absolute tolerances. So you can dial these down or up. Uh, and then I call the ODE45 command with my Lorentz right-hand side, locking in the beta parameters, and I tell it I want to integrate over this time span starting at x naught with these options. So I can run this, and then what's going to spit out is a big x vector. So let's just run this. Let's save and run. No errors. Oh, there's an error. Uh, what does it say? It doesn't like relative, oh, it's not relative tell, it's relative tall with an OL. That's a simple one. Okay, it's running it, it's evaluating, and it ran. So now I can look at what the size of X is, and it's a 50,000 by 3 vector. So the, so the first column is X, the second column is Y, and the third column is Z, and every row is a different delta T. So now what I can do is I can say plot uh, 3, the first column of x, uh, by the second column of x, by the third column of x. And why don't I make this, uh, why don't I make this white line width uh, 1.5. I'm going to do a couple things to make it look nice on this black background. So I'm going to make it a white plot. Um, I'm going to set my GCA color to be black. I'm going to set my X color to be white, my Y color to be white, and my Z color to be white. And I'm going to set my GCF to be color black. This is basically just going to make it look cool with a black background and a um, with a black background and a white line on top of it. OK, let's save this and let's run. So now it's going to simulate it and it's going to plot this thing. And hopefully, nice, it plotted it on a black background with a white Lorentz. And you can uh, rotate this around if you want and kind of see it from different perspectives and different angles. So this is the classic Lorentz butterfly attractor uh, from different angles. Really easy to simulate. Um, Again, mostly we just defined the right-hand side function here, uh, and then we plugged it into ODE45, and most everything else was just plotting. Okay, so very very simple uh, to do. Maybe the last thing I'll show you is just a kind of cool movie I made a long time ago, where this is a little blob of initial condition uncertainty, this red blob, and it's going to be integrated through this Lorentz system. And notice that it's stretching. Because this is a chaotic dynamical system, essentially what happens is any uncertainty in your initial conditions grows exponentially in time and eventually mixes onto this, uh, this butterfly attractor, because this looks like butterfly wings. And so you can see that these red points are mixing and mixing and folding on this Lorentz system. Let's play this one more time. So these initial conditions are integrating through and uh, stretching and folding through these dynamics. This is essentially the definition of chaos, is that there's a sensitive dependence on the initial conditions. So two points that started very close together can end up very far apart. Uh, and after long enough, it's only kind of a statistical description of where these red points will be on this attractor. Okay, So very easy to simulate in MATLAB. You can make really cool visualizations very simply. And we're going to use this a lot. So this is how we're going to get 
data for to test a lot of our systems is by integrating them in ODE 45. Um, and you can simulate much more complicated systems. Okay, thank you.